We're going to start by creating a new job in which we will measure our wet sheet. We give the job a descriptive name so we can refer to it at a later date. We will click on the plus button to create a new ink and paper combination. Choose a colour bar to print and measure that contains as much data as you are likely to need in your standard print jobs. This makes the dryback more valuable for the future. And now for the first part of the process, we need to define the measurements as wet. We will later duplicate these job settings, but set our second job to dry. We're now ready to measure, and I'm using an I1 for this demonstration. Note that this blue outline transparent droplet icon next to the ink and paper name means there is currently no dry back data held for this combination, and we are measuring a wet sheet. We will take a number of measurements to help in the accuracy of our data. Check the performance of the press matches your output expectations. If we select Save Dryback at this stage, we can see how the first stage of the process is viewed. Our job name appears in the list with our paper ink selected in the top right of the window. With our job name selected, we can see all of the qualifying measurements in that job. You will also see a preview of the colour bar measurement at the bottom. It's important that both wet and dry colour measurements have exactly the same patch data for this dry back to work. Be sure to keep the sheets and number them according to the order we have in our wet job. We now need to wait sufficient time for the ink to dry. Speak to your ink manufacturer and see what would be the optimum time before the measurements are made. It may be necessary to perform a trial ahead of this exercise to establish a useful gauge of ink stability. We now need to set up our dry job. I begin by giving it a name that has a relation to our wet measurement. This isn't compulsory but it helps us in identifying the jobs as being related if we need to look at this dry back in the future. For the rest of the job I will use the same settings as the wet sheet, with the exception of setting this job as dry. We now need to re-measure the retained sheets from our wet test. Note our dry back indicator droplet is still hollow but now has an orange border, meaning we are measuring a dry sheet but no dry back calculation has been applied. We can see from the initial measurements that there has been some significant dry back and this has caused our score to decrease. Let's measure the rest of the sheets. If we look at our full strip view, we can see that the cyan has remained constant, but there's been a dry back which has caused a colour shift in the magenta yellow and most of all the black channels. Now we can click on the Save Dry Back button again to re-enter the calculation screen. At the top right of our screen, we highlight our ink and paper combination and see that we have both wet and dry jobs now. We can select measurements from both tables to compare and now form a dryback calculation.
Notice our current measurement table records our initial dryback calculation data. As this is our first calculation with this ink and paper combination, there is no data in the table below. We can add additional measurements from further jobs if we wish to hone the data and potentially improve accuracy. This will populate the bottom table with our learned data. Please note again that our patch count and type illustrates that both colour bar measurements have the same patch recognition data. These must be the same to obtain a dryback. If not, an error will occur. Once we click Save Dryback, we receive a message indicating this has been successful. Our dryback data table above the colour bar is now populated with our first set of data. Now we can test the new calculation by making a new wet job with the same ink paper selected. I will begin the measurements as before, but this time our wet sheets will score relative to how much they will dry back. This fill droplet icon informs us that the dryback has been calculated and will be applied. Let's look at the dryback screen in more detail. First we have a wet and a dry search function so that we can filter our job selection. This is where we select the ink and paper selection we want to use. Again we have the droplet indicator to tell us if there has already been any dryback calculation. These two tables detail the wet and dry jobs that fulfil our search and ink paper criteria. And these tables show us the measurements within those jobs. This table shows us the delta E or LAB and delta D density between the wet and dry measurements we've selected. These values are averaged if there are multiple instances of a patch in the colour bar. For example, we have 12 cyan patches in this colour bar from which an average will be calculated. This table is similar to the last but holds the current saved dryback data for this ink and paper calculation. As more measurements are added from varied jobs, the application learns and develops a more detailed calculation to how this ink dries with this media. This is a diagram of the colour bar data held in these measurements. Any differences between the wet and dry colour bars here will mean a dryback calculation cannot occur. It's important that you verify that the patch data is the same whilst you are undertaking the wet and dry measurements with your device. Finally, this is our colour inspector window. If we hover over a patch in the colour bar, we are able to view specific information regarding that colour.